Geekom is back with another AMD flagship mini, and the AE7 is the closest thing to an AMD NUC you could possibly find. Except, it's silver coloured, has the Geekom logo, and an SD card reader. Okay, so a few differences, but the important thing is, let's just get into the in-depth review right after this message. Have you lost a product key on your PC? Easus Keyfinder can recover and back up all product keys on your system. With this app, you can display product keys of Windows, Office, Adobe products, and more. You can also find Wi-Fi codes, browser accounts, and passwords. Try it for free with a link in the video description. The AE7 closely follows the design of Intel NUX from previous years, closest to the last couple of Pro releases. And like the recent Pro NUX, this Mini is made of plastic on the outside, but has a solid feel in the hands thanks to the metal frame inside. And as per usual with NUX designs, the bottom lid is also metal. The beating heart inside this one, or is it brain? Whatever, it's AMD's 7000 series flagship CPU, the Ryzen 7940HS. However, you might point out that AMD's 8000 series is already on the market, and having already tested that flagship, I can say they're almost identical in performance. The only thing the 8000 series adds is better AI performance. Quick! Run out and buy 10. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same 8-core 16-thread chip with Radeon 780M graphics. Geekom's AE7 is available on the official website and Amazon.com, although as of this video, it's a bit cheaper at 664 US dollars on the official website for the 1TB SSD, 32GB DDR5-5600 memory combo. Geekom is also one of the few brands offering 3-year warranties. The port selection consists of a full-size SD card reader on the side, a couple USB 3 10 gigabit on the front, one on the back, along with a USB 2. Dual HDMI and dual USB-C allow up to four displays. One of the USB-C is USB 4. I tried to power on the Mini using USB-C with my 75 watt monitor, but neither port allowed it to show any life. However, both USB-C ports did support display without issue. Realtek 2.5 Gigabit LAN and MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E are used for networking. And testing its wireless range using my Bluetooth audio speaker, audio played uninterrupted at 3.2 meters or 10.5 feet. An average result. The usual Geekom accessories are included. A compact power supply along with a monitor mount and HDMI cord. Geekom bundles the AE7 with Windows 11 Pro. No malware was found on this mini with a scan. Unfortunately, the MediaTek Wi-Fi chip used still isn't supported out of the box with Ubuntu. So you'll have to try and find the driver for it if you want to use Wi-Fi in Linux. Otherwise, Ubuntu worked fine off the USB drive. Opening up this mini is just like a NUC. Four screws and then just lift the bottom plate. There's a thermal pad for the M.2 NVMe storage drive. And while a 2.5 inch SATA drive bay is included, this Mini doesn't support any more storage options than the drive it comes with. Underneath the NVMe drive is the M.2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. When it comes to benchmark scores, the AE7 performs well. Single core Cinebench is around the other 7940H Minis. Multicore is the second best result. Out of the box, the AE7 is set to a performance fan profile, so this is as good as it gets. Geekbench 6 love this mini for single core, putting it at the top of this selection. And in multi-core, it also took the top AMD Ryzen spot. Its H.264 encoding is also very impressive, even beating out the i9-13900H and taking the top AMD spot. Same with AV1 software. Hardware encoding matched the 8000 series chips, a good performer so far. And that continues with 3 Mark Firestrike and Time Spy, one of the top results in these benchmarks. I don't have enough Steel Nomad data yet, but it's also the top result so far. Geekom includes a Gen 4 NVMe storage drive. It's not particularly fast for Gen 4, but does hit above Gen 3 speeds in sequential read and write. While the Geekom AE7 doesn't have active cooling on the underside of the board, the vents on the side of it might help keep the DDR5 RAM cool enough. Let's do the usual test to see if that's the case. I'll leave Cyberpunk running for 45 minutes and we'll see if the frame rate drops. And the answer is, yes it does. DDR5 temp is 79C for one module and 75C for the other. 
That's enough to start affecting the memory speed which the iGPU relies on. And there's a drop in frame rate. Next, I'm checking that Secure Boot works fine by testing Valorant, which needs it to function, and we're all good here. There's not a whole lot left to say about the 7940HS gaming wise. It performs much like all the top AMD chips with Radeon 780M. That means good esports performance and more GPU heavy titles like today's AAA games will need to have FSR upscaling enabled to keep frame rates decent. Without it, you'll get sub 30 FPS at 1080p with some titles, even at the lowest detail preset. The USB 4 port gives you the option of using an eGPU and getting more graphics grunt like I'm using here with an RTX 3070 on a Razer Core X eGPU. When it comes to emulation, the previous generation Radeon 680M played PS2 and GameCube Wii titles at 1440p just fine. This time I'm trying 4K and it depends on the game. Tekken Tag at 4K is no problem, while something tough to emulate like Gran Turismo 4 doesn't maintain full speed. Dolphin GPU requirements are higher than the PS2 emulator, and even something easier to emulate like Mario Kart Wii doesn't run full speed at 4K. It's close, but not quite there. Most PS3 and Wii U games will run fine at 1080p. I've tried video editing at 4K with these CPUs many times, and they do the job pretty well. The CPU and integrated graphics power through the video decoding without trouble. There's not a whole lot of action in the BIOS, but you can change the fan mode, choose what happens when there's power loss, and enable wake on LAN. That's about it. Most options are hidden. At 8 watts, idle power draw is on the lower side, while 100 watt for maximum is around what other minis with this CPU are doing. The CPU temperature can get hot with a full core load at 95C, but it's not the highest result here. Geekom's A7 isn't quite under a full core load, coming in with a higher result over other 7940HS minis tested. The SSD only has a drive temperature sensor, but stayed reasonable thanks to the cooling solution already in place. Alright, let's finish this one up. Geekom's A7 continues the Intel NUC design of old, and is one of the rare minis to include an SD card slot. Geekom also provides a 3 year warranty, and overall performance with the A7 is good. However, there's no cooling underneath for the DDR5 memory, and it gets hot enough to throttle which drops frames in games. There are no additional storage slots. The one drive it comes with is all you get. Load fan noise is on the high side. And the wireless card used is not supported out of the box with Linux. Overall, the Geekom A7 is a decent mini PC with a few issues that keep it from being the best. But I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you're curious about AMD's 8000 series CPUs, you can find my review of the Geekom A8 right here. Cheers!